Well, good evening, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here, wilhitewx.com. Want to bring you an update. We have, uh, boy, it's been an interesting uh, winter for sure with the uh, lack of a uh, ton of wintry weather here in the Ohio Valley. But boy, we sure have had the rain. Now we're starting to uh, wrap up the winter a little bit and we're going to head into spring. And uh, we've got an early uh, season severe weather event. Looks to be shaping up here for the Ohio Valley and down into the Mississippi Valley as well. And that's what we want to talk about today. Don't get too used to the warmth. I do think there's another uh, couple of uh, colder shots as we open up March. I don't think it's going to last a tremendously long time. In fact, I think we probably get an early severe weather season the way things look to me. But let's deal with one thing at a time here. And so first off, let's talk about our severe weather threat that we've got going on for this weekend. It's going to be for Saturday. There's an enhanced risk of severe weather over a good chunk of Kentucky here. Uh, Indiana mostly, uh, the southern part of the state and the extreme southern part of the state at that uh, here under a slight risk. If we switch to Indiana's view, you can kind of see some cities there. You can pause the video and come back and sort of see where you are uh, in general. But pretty much the setup that we've got going on is a warm front's going to lift north. And exactly how far north that warm front go is going it goes is going to determine how far the warm sector and therefore the uh, severe weather threat with this goes as of right now. Doesn't look like it pushes too far into Indiana. Enough that we could get some severe storms in the extreme southern part of the state. But <clears throat> excuse me, folks. But as you head closer to points, uh, say Bloomington and northward, you, you you just fade away from that risk then pretty fast. Out to a national view, here's what it looks like, and you can see that enhanced risk. Uh, you know, just uh, a severe weather in, uh, indicates all the way back here to the Mississippi River. Here's what we're really concerned about, though, the probabilities, and notice the hatched area there, and that hatched area uh, does go into the very uh, southwest corner, portions of the very southwest corner of Indiana, and that is uh, indicating the the uh, potential for significant severe weather. So this would be strong tornadoes, EF2, and stronger uh, wind gusts 70 miles per hour or greater, or hail 2 inches in diameter or greater. It's not really hail that we're going to be facing this time. It looks like the potential for 70 plus mile per hour wind gusts, as well as a couple of strong tornadoes could be possible with this. And really, all modes of severe weather will be possible on Saturday. And the biggest thing, honestly, may end up being the flooding. Uh, here's the thing about this. This is going to be what we call a, uh, a high wind shear, low instability event. And historically, whenever we've had these around here, Honestly, they're mixed signals for us. Sometimes they produce a, a pretty good severe weather event, widespread severe weather. Other times, all they do is a heavy rain threat. And so it really could go either way. I don't want to hype this up into something that it's not, but also don't want to play it down and say, well, there's just no worries. You don't need to worry about severe weather. No, we need to prepare and we need to have a plan and we need to have our severe weather action plan in place, know where our safe place is. But it's certainly not anything I would cancel uh, travel plans or things like this for. Uh, just uh, stay weather aware and we'll get through it. Let's talk about the setup and what we need. So as I said, there's a warm front that's going to go through on Saturday. Here's the map from the National Weather Service on Saturday. You see that warm front lifting into our area. Again, exactly how far north that lifts is going to determine the extent to severe weather threat. And then you've got a cold front that's going to be coming through uh, uh, later that evening and a reinforcing shot then on Sunday that's going to usher in some much colder weather for us, but it's going to be pretty doggone warm as far as uh, all things are concerned. Uh, for Saturday, we're going to warm uh, many of us up into the 60s. So remember that to get severe storms, as I've talked about in videos in the past, you need three things. You need some sort of a forcing mechanism, something to sort of fire off the storms. There you go. You've got a warm front moving through and then a cold front uh, and a low pressure in the area. Plenty of mechanisms to lift, uh, lift up and fire up some storms. No problem about that. You also need strong wind shear aloft. And strong wind shear, those strong wind energies, to get organized severe weather, you really need about 40 units, 40 knots of, of uh, wind somewhere in the atmosphere uh, up and down to be able to sustain an organized severe weather event. Well, we have plenty of that, and I mean plenty. So here's the setup that we've got going on. And, and there are several things that are concerning about this. This is for Saturday afternoon. And it's sort of hard to see right here, so let me draw on it and sort of let you know where we are. Indiana is right in here, all right? And then here is a rough drawing of Kentucky. Terrible drawing, but you get the idea of where we go. Let me change uh, coloring on here so you can kind of get an idea. 
You got a low pressure that's right over in here, and then notice this strong wind field aloft. But notice what's going on. Winds rotate counterclockwise around the low pressures, and so what you've got is what we call diverging winds, and they've got winds going this way as it exits uh, as it exits up the trough, and then down here you've got winds going this way. Where we are in that exit region is the prime region you would expect severe weather uh, to be uh, at, and so right in that exit region as you go through here certainly puts all of this area roughly under the risk for severe weather with that, all right? Now... Uh, notice uh, the extreme amount of winds though, that you've got uh, down here. As I put this forward uh, in time here, uh, what you can see is this is uh, this is around noon on Saturday, and that by the time the evening rolls around, those extreme winds are starting to roll over us. And you're talking winds. Uh, this is forty thousand feet up in the air, over a hundred knots uh, here in the area that we would be expecting severe weather in. And again. You only need 40, so we are just more than above and beyond that. And the other thing that's concerning is if we go down lower into the atmosphere to about 5,000 feet up, and let's go forward in time here until Saturday afternoon, and notice what we've got going on on Saturday afternoon. This is a low-level jet cranking up here. And so uh, by the time you would start to see some severe storms fire in the area here, again, here's uh, where we are, Indiana and Kentucky, sort of uh, in this region right in here. And notice that you've got anywhere from 60 to 80 knots of wind about 4,000 feet overhead. So you, you've got 100 knots at about 40,000 feet. Going down in the atmosphere, it slows down to about 70 to 80 knots, uh, just about 4,000 feet overhead. That is an incredible amount of wind energy, more than enough to organize a severe weather event. And to be quite honest, folks, with a low-level jet is what we call this. If you look up in the sky and you basically see your clouds are just screaming fast overhead, that's because of the low-level jet. And whenever you have that in here, you can get uh, just a, a pretty powerful severe weather event if the other necessary ingredients are in place with that. And as we, as we take a look at this, we look at a cross-section up and above everything. So the red here are your surface winds. And then as you go up to your 850 and 500 millibar levels, 4,000 feet and then 40,000 feet up in the atmosphere, notice what you got going on is some twisting. And so, you know, you've got winds here at the surface going like this. But they go like this and then like this as you get further up into the atmosphere. So the winds veer with height. They also get stronger with height. So not only do you have directional shear, but you've got speed shear. Whenever you see that, you have to worry about a tornado threat because that's exactly what happens is you get this rotating column of air and it starts to have this twisting motion as it goes up. And so it's got the twisting winds going up in the column that can help to produce tornadoes. So the tornado threat, definitely not non-existent with this. While I don't think it may be the primary threat with this, we certainly can't rule it out either. But here's the limiting factor on this. There's a third thing that you need to produce severe storms. You need a forcing mechanism. Again, we've got that through the fronts and the low pressure in the area. You need strong wind shear. We've already got that. But the last thing that you need is some instability. That comes in the form of warmth and moisture. And instability, well, it, it's February. And, and we're going to warm up, but there's a question on how much instability we have. With uh, for that, we use a product called CAPE, Convective Available Potential Energy. And that basically just helps us to measure how much energy there is in the atmosphere. And you notice the light gray colors on this. And so we're not talking about a tremendous amount of CAPE. If this were summertime, uh, we would look at this and say, yeah, that's probably not going to be much of anything. But, but the reality is this is not summertime, it's wintertime. And if you can get even three, four, five hundred units of, of, of CAPE measured in joules per kilogram, uh, if you can get that or, or better, in the wintertime, you can absolutely fire severe storms, especially if you've got plenty of wind energy to help compensate. And look at what we've got in the area. We've, we've got plenty of that. We're talking four, five, even 600 units uh, uh, of Cape there at places. So it's not non-existent. It is rather low still. So that is kind of a limiting factor. The other thing is, uh, you know, do the models actually have this right? The models estimating Cape even a couple of days out in advance, uh, they, they don't always do so well. The other thing that we've got working uh, possibly against us is cloud cover. The more cloud cover you get to break and the more sun you get out, the stronger the instability can become because, again, it's a matter of warmth and moisture. And here's the reality is we stay cloudy pretty much all the day. You start off as you're waking up cloudy. This is a cl total cloud cover. So there's some breaks maybe out to our west, but it just stays pretty well cloudy here until you start to see the front move through. And this is the back side of the front, and that's when you start to see the breaks come in at nighttime. So if we stay very cloudy during the day, even though we have surface temperatures just just uh, really pumping up into here, 
that will help us. Now, I do think that will be a, that will give a little bit of instability. Is it going to give mega amounts of instability? No, this is going to be a low instability event. But still, there will be some instability. I, I'm a firm believer in that. You got temperatures here, uh, you know, on Saturday afternoon. Uh, 50s for most of Indiana along the river. You're close to 60. Look here in western Kentucky. You're flirting with 70 in some places down here. It's going to get downright warm in the area. If you look at dew points, you can just see the moisture surging up from the Gulf of Mexico here as well. So all that to say, while we may not have a ton of, uh, of uh, instability here, we're certainly going to have some. And I think there will be at least enough of all three ingredients in place that we can get something firing off. Now, the way that we can kind of help measure then whether it's more of a tornado threat or whether it's more of a severe storm threat is by looking at some other products. So we're looking here at storm relative helicity. This is a measure of spin in the atmosphere. That's what helicity is. Storm relative meaning it's, it's factored out the motion of the storm so that you're getting the true spin and not just the motion of the storm. Uh, you look at this and what you see is that as we go through the afternoon and evening hours on Saturday, we've got a ton of spin in the atmosphere. That means there is a potential for uh, strong tornadoes with that kind of thing. But here's the problem. Again, you, you need to have uh, instability here. And so if you use another uh, equation here that factors not just helicity, but it's called the energy helicity index. It takes the storm relative helicity and it combines it with our cape, with our, our measure of instability, puts it into an index that helps us, well, could we see tornadic development out of this? And as you roll through here, here's what you see. The better parameters are down to our south. And, and so as you come into the evening time, which is when the squall line would be rolling through most of the region, really what you notice here is that the best uh, parameters for tornadic activity it is sort of south of most of the area here it's, it's really down up into here uh, by this point and, uh, and and it's just not uh, it's just really non-existent for most of us across the area that's a good thing so i think the primary uh we're Primary thing that we're going to need to worry about here is damaging winds, folks. I cannot rule tornadoes out. Some of the data says strong tornadoes. Some of the data says that's rather limited. Usually you sort of take a mix of the two and you could say it's a low end tornado threat. You can't remove uh, them as a possibility altogether, but it doesn't look like a, a March outbreak like we had with the Henryville tornado or anything like that. All right. This is not that kind of a day, thankfully, but certainly uh, they could be there uh, with that. Well, let's take a look at future radar and start to wrap this video up then. Uh, let's time it all out. First off, you know, it's Thursday night. We got some rain that rolls through uh, the area tonight. Surprise, surprise, more rain. And then as you go through Friday, uh, Kentucky gets a fair amount of rain where Indiana it looks like it's more scattered on Friday. But as Friday night moves in and then into the early hours on Saturday, what you see happening here is the warm front is lifting north. And as the warm front lifts north early on Saturday morning, that's when just probably a deluge of rain comes on. So I would expect some very, very heavy rain with this. And then as that heavy rain pushes out, it becomes more of a scattered Threat for the afternoon, we'll have to look to see whether any of these go severe. Uh, that, that's the possibility with that kind of wind energy. So well, that's something that we'll have to take a look at. And these individual cells that you see out ahead of the line could be concerning. But the biggest concern I have right now is what will be a squall line. Uh, and it's probably going to be a broken squall line start to form. And so here we are by about uh, 6, 7, 8 p.m. And, and that's that broken line of storms is sort of rolling across Indiana and Kentucky. Um, before it's starting to exit the area as you get uh, to about midnight or so. So anywhere from, say, about 6 to midnight in that time frame, I think, is whenever the prime uh, severe weather threat will be on Saturday, the way things look. And with that squall line of storms, not only are you going to have some heavy rain that will come with this as well, and, uh, you know, you've got heavy rain that was already before. So, again, with waterlogged uh, soils, there could be some flooding concerns with this. Wouldn't be shocked to see some flash flood warnings hoisted for parts of the area with this. It really wouldn't. Um, but that could also, you know, weaken some tree roots from the waterlogged soils. And so you have to sort of worry then uh, with this as well about, you know, even some strong winds that are non-severe, even 40, 50 mile per hour gusts. Not technically severe criteria, but certainly possible with the with this strong low pressure that's moving in, uh, and that could knock some stuff over. So you know, but we'll have to watch this. Any storm that does go severe in this line certainly has a potential for 70, even 80 mile per hour winds with this. Uh, unfortunately, this could be a pretty powerful squall line moves through. If there's any consolation, I think it's going to be more broken than what it wants to show here. Uh, I see this probably as a more of a broken line, which means that some people may get the line and some people may miss out entirely on the line. 
that would be a good thing for you that who miss out on that most certainly but that's something we're going to have to monitor and again we'll just sort of end here how much rain could we get well again you're looking at another one to two inches and locally higher amounts the high res nam here suggesting even some three and close to four inch amounts possible at least in spots if you get thunderstorms that just train over one location at a time it's possible for these to get even higher but a general uh, we will just uh, sort of say uh, in general for this area right in here of Kentucky let's just say another additional one to three inches of rain will be possible on Saturday and sort of leave it at that we don't need this that's going to be uh, really bad for the river flooding the Ohio River is already on the rise again unfortunately you can expect some more flooding with this so bottom line severe weather threat on saturday stay weather aware i'll have more videos as we get closer to time i'm meteorologist michael wilhite wilhite be sure to follow me on facebook and twitter